Having a bad supervisor, either as a PhD student or an early career researcher, is unfortunately a problem across academia. And I don't mean to say that all supervisors are bad, I'm far from saying that. But unfortunately, bad supervisors are to be found in academia more often than we would like to. And perhaps you also have a bad or a mediocre supervisor and there are things that you aren't happy with when it comes to your relationship with the supervisor. So that's why in this video, I want to outline what to do in a situation like that if you have a bad supervisor, either as a PhD student or an early career researcher. Now, how do I know that so many PhD students and early career researchers have bad supervisors? Well, over the years, over the last two years at Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers publish research papers regularly, you know, we unfortunately have found that the main reason why clients reach out to us for support, many after watching our YouTube tutorials, is because they don't get feedback regularly, there's no guidance, the supervisor is absent, and there is no supervision, really. And this is sad, and it's unfortunately symptomatic across the whole of academia in different countries. And some PhD students or researchers, to an extent, don't even realize how bad their own supervisor is. And the reason for that is that we have come to accept certain things that are actually unacceptable from our own supervisors. Because everybody else is getting the same treatment, we kind of think, well, okay, perhaps it's normal. Perhaps it's normal to get feedback once a month, once every two months. Perhaps it's normal that my supervisor takes a week or two weeks to respond to me. Perhaps it's normal that the advice that I get is very vague and I'm never told like how to specifically do a certain thing, how to accelerate the process and things like that. No, it's not normal at all. So if you are in a situation like that, then in this video, I'm going to show you what to do in order to improve that situation. But first of all, I want to talk about identifying a bad supervisor because that's also really important. And there are several keys to spot a bad supervisor. First of all, how often do you get meetings with your supervisor? Is it once a month? Once every two months? You tell me, let me know in the comments. How often are you able to meet your supervisor to talk about your research, your papers? If it's not at least once a week, then it's a sign of a bad supervisor. And we honestly sometimes get PhD students or researchers who come to us and they haven't seen the supervisor in two months. That's, that's not right. Don't accept something like that. That's a sign of a bad supervisor. Another sign of a bad supervisor is not just the frequency of the guidance and mentorship, but also the quality of it. So what happens very often is that, you know, let's say a PhD student will come for advice and they will, you know, they will ask, how can I find the right research topic more easily? Or how can I specify my research questions? And usually the advice you will get is something along the lines, well, look, you're a PhD student now, you should be independent. I'm not going to tell you how to do your own work. Go and find out and find a better research question yourself. But I mean, this advice is just nonsensical. Also from the point of view of the supervisor, I have no idea why sometimes supervisors give that sort of advice because if I was a supervisor, I want my PhD student to finish their PhD as quickly as possible with as little effort on my part as possible with as few problems and to publish in high impact journals. And in order for that to happen, I need to give them good guidance. If I don't give them good guidance, then they're going to struggle. They're going to make a ton of mistakes. The process is going to be longer. It's going to be more painful for the student, but it's going to be more painful for me because then I have to revise that crap work that they're submitting. And they're submitting crap work because, you know, you haven't been given any guidance, right? It boggles my mind why this happens. But if you get that sort of advice, very vague, unspecific, you know, you're a postdoc now, you're a PhD student, go and figure that out on your own. That's a sign of a very bad supervisor. Another sign of a very bad supervisor is feedback. Again, the frequency and the quality of that feedback. And again, let me know in the comments, how often do you get feedback from your supervisor? And I bet you it's something like once a month, if you're lucky. For a lot of PhD students or researchers, like once every two, three months. How can you improve your writing if you get feedback once every four or six weeks? 
the process of improvement is going to be so much more slower because there is no feedback loop. The feedback loop is broken. What you want to do is create a tighter feedback loop. When you get feedback on a weekly basis on shorter chunks of text so that, you know, you can improve and improve and improve and improve. And by the time, you know, six uh, weeks, two months, three months have passed, the writing that you're producing is significantly better than what you were producing at the beginning. And from the point of view of the supervisor, if I was your PhD supervisor, I would do exactly that because it's in my own best interest. If I put in a little bit more effort and give you more feedback more regularly at the beginning, overall, that's just so much less effort in the end because you're going to produce more papers, better papers. We're going to publish them in higher impact journals. You're going to write a better thesis and I'm going to have to do less work in year three and four because you already will know exactly what to do, right? So it should be frequent weekly feedback. If you're not getting that, it's a sign of a bad supervisor. The quality of the feedback is also a sign of a bad supervisor. For a lot of PhD students or researchers that come to us, usually the feedback that they get, again, is very vague. It's something like this introduction isn't properly structured. There is no coherent story. Well, what am I supposed to do with that, if you can tell me? I mean, I don't even know what a story is. I thought I was writing a paper, not a novel, okay, but there's supposed to be a story. I've tried to organize it logically. Okay, so what do you want me to do with feedback like that? I wouldn't know, even as an experienced researcher, I would have no idea what to do with this kind of feedback, right? The feedback that you want to get should be very specific. Identify the problem, like, you know, the, the structure of this introduction is illogical and then specify why for three main reasons. Number one, number two, and number three. These are, these are the three things you did badly, right? So you have clarity on the problem. And then you've got to provide a solution. I don't mean that the supervisor should write the introduction for you, but they should give you guidance on how to write it, right? So in order to fix that problem with your introduction, you should follow this structure. Step number one, step two, three, four, five. This is what you should do. Can you do that for next week? This is good feedback. If you're not getting that sort of feedback on a regular weekly basis, then you're gonna be in trouble. And that's a sign of a bad supervisor. There are other signs, of course, of a bad supervisor, but I think these are the main ones that I wanna deal with here today. And before I show you how to solve these issues and how to deal with a bad supervisor. If you want to get external personalized help with your PhD thesis or with your research papers, then definitely schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. We're going to see what challenges you have and how best we can assist you so that you can publish more papers in better journals. Okay, now that you know that you have a bad supervisor, how do you deal with that? What's the approach that you should take to develop a better relationship and have a better supervisor? I mean, ideally you would just swap the bad supervisor for a good supervisor and your job would be done, but that's probably not possible, right? So I think the best thing that you can do is to discuss it. Right? There's nothing better than being fully transparent and having an adult conversation about the problems that we have. I think for too many people, avoid problems. We sweep them under the carpet and we, we'd rather not discuss them, right? We complain about our supervisor to other PhD students, to other researchers, but we rarely do anything about it. I've witnessed similar situations in a lab that I'm familiar with and I've seen these people complain about certain things that the supervisor does or rather does not do like feedback and it's always puzzled me why nobody ever talks to the supervisor about it like they're happy to you know to really complain about what's going on and everybody has the same complaints but there is no solution to it nobody is willing to step up and solve it so if you want to solve that problem you just need to talk to your supervisor I think right now how do you approach it of course you don't, you can't tell them that they're a bad supervisor because that's not, that's just not gonna work right everybody is proud and you know you need to talk to them in a specific way so I think once you've gotten the courage to go and speak to them you've got to just I think be really transparent 
and just say like, you know, look, this is, this is the problem that I can see. The problem that I can see is that like, I've been trying to write this paper to the best of my ability and I've been doing it for the last month. And unfortunately, you know, I know that you're very busy. You've got other four PhD students and like you're writing papers yourself. So I know that like you're super busy, but I haven't been able to see you at all in the last month and get feedback from you. And this has really been kind of like making me doubt whether I'm on the right track and it's really been stalling my progress. So I was wondering if we can, you know, sort of work out a way in which I can get more frequent feedback. So what you're doing here is just, you're not putting the blame on the person because the worst thing that you can do is just to blame the person. As soon as you start blaming the person, you're attacking them, they'll become defensive and the, the whole thing will blow up. What you want to do is attack the process. So you want to talk about the problem that you're seeing with your paper and the process of writing that paper and make a suggestion of what should happen next. And you also want to phrase it in positive terms to show that you value the feedback and the guidance from your supervisor, right? You want to say that with their feedback, the process would be much faster because you know, you're an expert in the field. You know how to write that research paper. And you know, if I could get feedback on maybe two paragraphs a week, that would be invaluable because that would show me exactly kind of what I'm doing wrong and I could progress faster. I would have more clarity on where to go next. And also what you want to do is perhaps outline the benefits of that for the supervisor. Because I think, you know, people are set in the ways and people have a certain way of doing it. They've always done it like that. So why change, right? And I think this idea of giving people feedback and guidance more frequently seems like more work to a lot of people. Well, I have to give you feedback weekly. I don't have time for that, you know? What you wanna paint for them is that, you know, this feedback, first of all, will be shorter. You, you're not gonna be sending them like 20 pages. You're gonna be giving them maybe a page to read. It's gonna take 20 minutes to read that page and give you like two pointers on what needs to be improved there, right? And also what you wanna point out is the benefits of that. So if you get feedback on a weekly basis, the feedback loop will be shorter so that the text that you submit next week is even better. In three weeks, it's gonna be even better. And then by the time the whole paper has been finished in six weeks, you've already gotten feedback six times from them. So the final product is almost good to go, which means there is less work for you as a supervisor, right? Because I'm gonna be submitting much better text. And probably if we do that for a year, then next year, I won't even need your guidance, right? And when I submit a paper to you, it's gonna probably be really good, right? That's the sort of picture you wanna paint for them. But really, you know, in order to resolve an issue with a bad supervisor, you need to speak to them, right? It's fair enough, you wanna complain about it with your colleagues, do that, complain about the situation, but that's not gonna resolve it. It's just gonna get worse over time. To resolve it, you need to talk about it. And it's difficult to confront that situation, but you have to do it. Because if you have a bad supervisor and you don't resolve it, then things will get out of control. You will miss deadlines, you will be stressed, you will be overworked, and maybe you won't even finish your PhD in time and papers won't get written. And obviously you don't want that situation to happen. Your supervisor doesn't want that to happen either. So if you have a bad supervisor to deal with it, my advice would be to talk to them and be just fully transparent. Outline the problem with the process. Remember, attack the process, don't attack the person. And then suggest what could be done instead and also show the benefits of that. If we do something else, what are the benefits of that? Now, if you're interested in personalized one-to-one -one mentorship, regular specific feedback on your writing so that you can finish your writing goals in time, then definitely book a free one-to-one -one consultation with my team. We're gonna go over your problems and your goals and outline a plan for you and see if working together might be a good fit and might help solve the problems with your research paper writing. And the link to that free consultation is right below this video.